an interview with diver, author, photographer, instructor, Chris Mears. Chris has dove all over the world, UK, Central America, Maldives, Australia, Palau, and now Chris is stationed in Portugalera, Philippines. Now this is part one of a two-part interview. The whole interview was about one hour or so, about 30 minutes each. This is part two of Chris's interview, another 30 minutes or so. Stay tuned. Chris Mears is here with us today, and Chris just published a book. Uh, he must be so proud. I know I will be proud. I'm working on a couple books. This is awesome news. Chris, welcome to the channel. Thank you, Jim. Good morning to you. Good morning. And, and you're coming from where now? And I'm the international sales manager of Scandi Divers Resort in Puerto Galera, Philippines. And what I like about PG, it's, it's the shore-based liveaboard, I call it. Portugalera. Yeah. It's, it's very so, easy. It's a, yeah. it's a short, you know, so, you them, so convenient. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's so it there. for me, the best, you know, the short, slow, the, some of the most convenient diving I've ever been involved in, in Puerto Galera, to be honest, you know, it's really nice. Yeah. You know, they yeah. drop you in, you come up wherever you want, you know, the boat will be there to pick you up. You know, you don't have to navigate anything, just follow the, you know, go with the current, you know, and enjoy the reef. So it's, uh, so many dive little sites, tricky ones, you know, so like close. Canyons. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So many different variations, you know, with the muck diving and the, the, the coral reefs and the coral gardens. And then you've got the, the wrecks, you know. So, is it the yeah, Alma it's Jane? a pretty good place. Yes, yes, the Alma Jane. That's right. Yeah. It's right in yeah. front of Asia yeah, Divers. Yeah, yeah, right in front of, yeah, right in front of Asia Divers there. Yeah, yeah, very close. Only a, probably about a a one minute boat ride, something like that from the, from most of the results there. It's about 30 meters so, or so, yeah. I think, as I recall. Yeah, 30 meters down, yeah. She's right. still, she took, um, she's starting to ah. disintegrate a little bit now. I can see parts of it are falling off now. Um, uh -oh. We had a couple of bad typhoons this year as well. So that's also give it, uh, you know, give it pretty hard beating as well. So Hopefully she'll stay there for a few more years before she actually gotcha, totally right. collapses on herself, you know, but oh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a great dive, you know, really, really beautiful. It's a really good dive. There. Yeah, really good. Yeah. You know, beautiful. Yeah, I saw, I saw uh, some, uh, huge, uh, some huge frog fish on there when yeah, I was there. Yeah. Like the biggest ones yeah. I'd ever seen. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We get some big ones on there, the giant frog fish and the painted frog fish you can see there as well. Yeah, it's a very cool dive. Yeah, I do enjoy going on there. Let me ask you about muck yeah. diving. Now, that's sand diving? Yes, yeah. So, basically, um, the best areas in Puerto Galera for that is when you go um, around the point and into the actual Puerto Galera Bay itself. So, there's two little channels that lead into the bay. And then uh, you've got uh, sandy bottom. With it. There's a couple of bits of, you know, corals and stuff and some sponge beds. You know, but it's it's mostly a sandy bottom, about between forty and fifty yard feet, pretty much is the bottom there. And then yeah, you just take your time on the sand and find things like the mimic octopus, you know, and the the blue ring. Yeah, the I read that. Yeah. Poison matotti. Yeah, it's really a poison. What poison? Matotti? I've never seen anywhere like it. Uh, poison matotti. Yeah, it's oh, it's a poison ocelot octopus. Also, the the scientific name is the matotti. Yeah, so it's. Hmm. Uh, cousin of the blue ring octopus yeah it's okay. got instead of having many blue rings it's got just one blue ring oh interesting yeah so what one blue ring yeah so they're just as poisonous as the blue ring so um yeah they're pretty rare actually i've only seen them uh probably about on five or six dives in the whole time i've been putting so they are wow. very very rare octopus to see wow. but uh wow. yeah luckily the dive masters here got very eagle eyes you know so they can spot yeah you have to right yeah yeah I tell you, and, I hate sand diving. <laughs> oh, yeah. To be honest, I, I'm a massive convert to it. I, I know. I, I read first, that. Yeah, yeah. When I first went, I was like, what are we doing? You know, we're just swimming <laughs> over the sand. And I was like, what have I come here for? You know, I just gave up Blue Corner and, and uh, Science sea Channel, monsters. you know, for these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then slowly but surely, you know, I, I fell in love with the dive and I actually – if I had a choice now of where to go diving in Puerto Galera, actually the muck diving would be my first choice now, to be honest. Wow. You know, I really love shooting the octopus there and the ghost pipe wow. fish and the, you know, the seahorses yeah. over there. There's many seahorses. So right. yeah, I really, uh, really enjoy, you know, that. that All right. Well, maybe I'll have to oh, rededicate yeah. myself. You know, here, here are the yeah, main things. Check it out. Give, it a, like give it a chance. Angel sharks. Yeah. You know, angel sharks. 
Yeah, I've never seen them, but uh, I've seen so that's a video the main of them, thing yeah. that people can find in the sand here. Um, and, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, and in fact, there's one place where I go a lot. That's one of the the far islands, and they say you're not really a real dive master until you've been bitten by an angel shark. <laughs> 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 because apparently, apparently, I mean, I've only seen videos of them biting people and it's incredible because basically they're, you know, they're an ambush predator. They don't move, right? They're just there. And, yeah. and, and basically there, there's, there's no warning, right? It's just suddenly yeah. it, it comes up and it, it gives you a kiss, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, nice kiss there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what about your story? You, you, the Goliath grouper, I think you got bit by. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. I had a, we used to uh, we used to feed the groupers on a wreck dive called the Aguila in Roatan. It's very close to Anthony's Key Resort. There, just off the just off the resort. So it's a big big ship, very nice shipwreck. And um, yeah, typically you could see uh, ten or twenty very very big big groupers, you know. And so we used to feed them. I wasn't much of a fan of feeding fish and yeah. at that time I, w- I was feeding you on board. So, you know, I was the younger, the, the newest guy on board. So typically the, the first mate and the captain would be the ones to do the feeding, but the, the first mate was off and the captain was busy doing something in the engine. So he said, Chris, it's on you today, you know? And I was like, Oh no. Uh, so we used They're to as put, big as you, uh, right? used to get some, some like fish. Um, some of them, yeah, were, yeah, they're, they're pretty big, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're they're, talking monsters here. Some of them were, uh, yeah, yeah, you're talking, you know, two, two or three meters, some of them, you know, pretty big. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we had an empty Clorox bottle, and then we would put all these pizza fish inside, and we cut around the top of the lid so we could lift the lid up like this. And then I went down towards the wreck, and I wasn't holding the, the lid in place. So as we got onto the wreck, little bits of fish were, were coming out of the, the Clorox bottle. And then all of a sudden, the groupers all attacked me at the same time because they oh. could see there was fish coming out. So uh. once one of them went in, yeah. So, and then, yeah, within seconds, I had like 12 very large groupers. Not, they, one of them knocked the thing out of my hand. And then, you know, they just basically all attacked me at the same time. I ended up with uh, a group of uh, teeth marks in my hand you know, you could see yeah. the actual jawline of the of the groupers, so that was starting to bleed. And also, yeah. another one took a chunk out of my ankle, you know, and there was blood coming out of there as well. And, you know, it's pretty deep. It's about um, probably 80, 80 or ninety feet down there on where we did the feeding. And of course, you're looking at your hand, and you can see the blood coming out. You know, <laughs> and it's green, right? Because yeah. of the red. Yeah, green, of, of water, course, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm watching this green blood, you know, come out of my hand and my foot. And I'm like, oh, my God, I start thinking, then, oh, is there sharks here? You know, are they going to start smelling my blood as well? So, you know, the, I, actually, I, I, I had to go back up to the surface, obviously. You know, I had to end the dive. You know, the, the feeding was over in a couple of seconds. You know, Oof. they polished off all the, uh, yeah, it was very, very quick. Yeah, and you could hear them, you know, when they're coming at you and they snap their body, you know, when they kind of turn, you can hear their body really, like the muscles bang like snap and turn yeah and, i remember you wrote that yeah, yeah they that really <laughs> they really they gave me a they gave me a good shellacking <laughs> so yeah so i went back up to the boat and then um uh, i got to the back deck and the captain was there you know on the back deck and i put my hand on the back deck and then there's blood uh, pouring I out saw of it. It right away yeah. <laughs> and he's like ah oh, what happened to you chris you know what happened uh, said, oh, the, the, the group has got me cap they got me uh, good and proper wasn't there a girl because, involved with this story too uh no there was no girl involved in that one but, okay my mistake um there's a, there's another side part of the story where there's a big uh mutton snapper that was also normally there that would kind of hang around when we did the feeding and a few weeks before it actually bit the finger of the uh the first mate and he he still got a scar basically right down the middle of his finger from where the the mutton snapper so you can see really see the teeth you know, the group yeah. of teeth are quite small, but the mutton snapper's mm-hmm. teeth, you know, they're, they're, they're very, very big. And, and they actually split his finger right down the middle of his finger. So um, look, I'm just God. glad that the mutton snapper wasn't there, luckily, when I did the field. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he would have had a field day <laughs> with me as well. So, wow. you know, in, uh, in <laughs> yeah. Florida, so in was, Florida uh, where, where my family uh, lives and, and where I've done a, a bunch of my diving, they, they had a moratorium on um, 
Goliath grouper is for spearfishing and fishing. So yeah. they just got so many of them and, and they, they've become a real nu nuisance. And, you know, there are lots of stories of them attacking uh, snorkelers and, and divers. And, you know, people think, oh, you know, it's a fish. It's no big deal. It's a bloody big fish, right? It is. It's big. Yeah. And, you, you know, they're powerful. You know, they're really, really powerful. So, um, yeah, I, I learned a good lesson that day. I actually, I did go on to feed them a few more times, you know, o over the years that I worked there. I managed to, to, to learn from that experience, let's say. And uh, luckily after that, it wasn't any really uh, bad stuff. <laughs> good stuff. After that. Oh, yeah. good stuff. All the fingers are still intact, luckily. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. Hey, let me, let me ask you, pardon me. So I have here um, about discovery dives. Now, I, I think when I was reading this part of your book, you were sounding like you like discovery dives. You like taking folks on discovery dives. Yeah, yeah. It's really, for me, for people to see the reef for the first time, you know, I really love seeing their face. I watch them, you know, watch their face when they look in, you know, looking at things like the clownfish and that kind of thing. You know, that, that gives me, you know, really the, the greatest pleasure to introduce people to the underwater world. Mm -hmm. You know, really, really love that. Sometimes it can be a bit tough, you know, especially, <laughs> you know, especially with, with the Chinese guys as an example, you know, they literally just carting them around. You're just holding onto the tank valve, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, and basically One person just, at just a time you're doing? around. Um, I've done a couple of, I've had two at a time, a few times holding onto the tank valves and just kind of swimming them around. But um, yeah, the, always the language barrier, you know, was a was a tough thing with those guys. So, uh, but there was no option to do do them sometimes. But uh, for your average, you know, your average kind of discover scuba dive, then for me, it's the uh, yeah, for them to see the reef and the colours, mm. you know, for the first time, that really yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really really beautiful thing. I tell you, man, I hate them. <laughs> I just, they're terror for me. And, you know, probably, so we're, we're talking two different environments, right? Because I'm cool water, you know, with thick yeah. wetsuits and heavy weights and difficult shore entry and, you know, visibility. So it, there's the, the barrier for enjoyment, I feel like, is tough. And so, and I'm already scared. You know, I've had someone in, in pool for two days, and I'm scared to take open water students you know, after two days to 12 years. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, here I've got someone I don't know, you know, yeah, so they're, little, just, they're just kind of terrifying for me. Yeah, yeah. It can be, it can be pretty tricky, you know. <laughs> yeah, much prefer the ones that can speak English at least, you know. <laughs> and then you get the folks like, like I think you just said, like every once in a while, yeah, I've literally, I've only done it a handful of times in 15 years. And, you know, very yeah. often the person, the person doesn't kick their feet. They think I'm a scooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They want you to do all the work. <laughs> I'm not a scooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to you have to kick for three people. <laughs> it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, you have to wear the free diving fins to do that so you get a bit more, more propulsion, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely not split fins. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you mentioned about bull sharks, kind of maybe that you weren't looking forward to them. Is that is that one of the few creatures you're like maybe have a little fearful respect of or what? Yeah, I'd always, I mean, the bull sharks have got pretty bad press, right? You know, all over the world over the years. So I was a bit worried to see them. You know, I, I know that they don't, they, you know, they typically bite people in murky water and everything, right? And in shallow water in Australia, for example. Uh, yeah, so... I was a bit worried to see them, to be honest, but uh, I, I, yeah, it basically this happened in Palau. So we saw one uh, from a distance, really, because I was already going up to the surface and uh, it was basically below us. And I just watched it, you know, going along the bottom and I could see its whole body swaying, you know, it's like, wow, what a, what a beast, you know, a, a true bull, you know, really <laughs> a true muscular yeah. bull shark. So, um, yeah, a few weeks later, we were lucky enough to get to get within a couple of meters of one again at Peleliu, and uh, one came up over the wall, and then it was yeah, literally a couple of meters away from us. So uh, I, yeah, I I went after it. So I guess I wasn't that scared because I I swam after it with my camera, you know, trying. It was my first time to ever get one on video. So um, yeah, I was uh, delighted to to see it and uh, take it off the list. Wow. 
Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm no fan uh, of those. I, I have too much respect. Yeah. I just, <laughs> yeah. yeah Florida, Florida has a lot of them, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of them. Uh, what's that place? Jupiter, is it? Is it Jupiter? Yeah, yeah, Jupiter Reef. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jupiter Reef. Yeah, I see uh, quite a few videos and pictures from, from around there, so. Uh, but yeah, man, and you know what, every, shark, oh, sorry. <laughs> every, almost every, yeah, this like I've things. heard some troublesome stories and um, it almost always involves a fish, right? So spearfishing, um, they're, yeah, not, yeah. they're not good spearfishing buddies. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, you've got to be careful. Normally, you know, if, if you're feeding sharks in those kind of places, then you always have that, uh, that added risk of, of sharks seeing people as food, right? Especially yeah. there's been quite a few stories in the Red Sea recently of the, uh, the oceanic oh, white tips, you know, I've they've been attacking that. many, many people, you know, over the last kind of couple of years really now. I've seen that. And you know, th there's video of, of people on the liverboards chucking out huge tuna fish heads and stuff, you know, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So they, unfortunately now the sharks, uh, taking a bite out of some of the divers, you know, cause th th that, the, the white tips shark comes very close, right, to the divers there in the Red yes. Sea. So again, you, you see many good pictures, many excellent videos, but they're there for a reason. You know, normally they won't come close to you if uh, they're not expecting something, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, mm -hmm. and unfortunately now there's there's been quite a few attacks in the Red Sea over the last couple of years. You know, where they have just started biting people's legs and everything. You know, so yeah, uh, yeah you got to be a little bit yeah. careful. You know, you know, I saw some that. videos recently that uh, that the dive masters are kind of teasing them, like trying to get them to come bite their fins or something, or I don't know. I've seen some videos. Yeah, it's it's a risky game, you know. Those those sharks, they the you know they're not toys, are they? Let's face it, you know they they're wild. They they eat the apex predators, you know, in the ocean. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, you got to be a bit careful. I, I don't know if I'll be happy being so close to seeing a the oceanic white tip as close as it was because I I've seen videos, you know, at least four or five different people being bit, you know, this year. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's very risky for me. I would be, uh, yeah, a bit worried about that to be honest. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So yeah, right. be careful. What's your, if you could construct <laughs> a bucket list for someone, what would your, what would your, your, like your, in a, in a handful diver bucket list be? Um, you mean from the places I've already been working in? Yeah, or maybe my own places you haven't been. List. Yeah, yeah, places um, you've been or places you haven't my, been. Yeah, I would, I've still got a, a lot of places on my list which I'd love to go to. Um, the, the first one would probably be uh, Socorro Island, South Mexico. You know, I really love seeing those huge manta rays and stuff over there. Uh, that is one place I hope to get to within the next couple of years, if possible. Uh, I want to go and try Raja Rampat mm. in Indonesia. You know, Indonesia. everyone's raving about that place i've been to a few places in indonesia already but haven't been to rajarampat that's a place i really want to go uh truck lagoon for the wrecks uh, oh, yeah. i really want to yeah go and after enjoying the wrecks in in palau and in uh Karan. yeah i'd love to go Would and you do that the, tech, uh, like as deco trip or as recreation um we'll have to see i haven't really done that much tech diving to be honest you know for mm for quite a long time now. So I, uh, I'm a little bit rusty with regards to that, but right. uh, yeah, I would see, see how I'd see how I was feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, where else would I like to go? I'd like to go back to Australia, actually, to the places where I did my open water course, oh. my advanced course. Yeah. I'd like to go and yeah. revisit those uh, just to see what they like. You know, now I have a, a bunch more experience now. I'd love to go and check those out mm. again. Um, so that's a few places. Uh, recommendations from where I've worked, you know, if you love manta rays, then Maldives is spectacular. You know, if you guys can get to, to Hanifaru Bay, you know, in the north, that place is the best I've ever seen for manta rays. You know, if you can get there mm -hmm. on a good day, you know, and see 150 mantas, you know, in, in one little space, you know, that's very, very mind blowing experience that, you yeah. know, it's very hard to beat that. Uh, for macro, you have to come to Puerto Galera, you know, for the, to see the things like the blue ring and the mimic octopus, yeah. you know, those things, uh, well, they have mimic octopus quite small. Yeah. We have mimic octopus as well. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. Know that. So yeah, we have mimic. Yeah. We, so, you can also see them, uh, on the muck diving. Yeah. Muck diving. Oh, so, uh, okay. yeah. And also we have the wonder puss, which is also a cousin of the, 
in the make as well. So we have those guys there. Um, of course, Palau is amazing for the blue corner. Mm. And, um, you know, Sire's corner I saw there. You know, I don't know how many sharks, three or 400 sharks on one dive there, you know, just swimming in front of us. So, you know, those places. And, and Utila for whale sharks, you know. You know, even though the, the reef diving is a little bit in, in Honduras now, it's not as great as it used to be. You know, the corals are in, not in the best of shapes there. But, you know, for the, if you check out things like pilot whales, whale sharks, you know, dolphins, all of those things we saw on a regular basis there. So wow. there's been really spectacular sightings and everywhere I've worked uh, so far. Nice. So, uh, nice. yeah, yeah, it's been wow. been a hell nice. of a ride. <laughs> you know, you know yeah, what I would add to that? I would I would really yeah. love to see maybe that. Um, what do they call that? Iwashi, the uh, sardine run. Oh, yeah, yeah, in South Africa, yeah. That looks bonkers. Yeah, yeah that does look good, yeah, that looks amazing. Yeah, that does look pretty spectacular, you know, all those dolphins, sharks, and whales, and birds just, flying everywhere. Yeah, that would be bonkers. good, yeah. That would A be good. circus. Yeah, yeah, circus, yeah. Yeah, true circus. Yeah, yeah there's also a lot of places Galapagos. to go, you know. Galapagos. There's really, uh, yes, Galapagos, Cocos Island. I nearly oh, went there Cocos. two years ago, but yeah, Cocos Island, yeah, another place. Mm. Yeah, those are the big money trips, right? You're talking about seven grand, right, to get out to those. So, uh, well, the problem, yeah. Cocos. I had some friends who went yeah. there. I mean, just the logistic of getting there is kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty tricky. Pretty tricky. Mm. What I'm trying to plan and do over the coming years is when I'm in the U.S. for sales trips, I, I hope to try and get down to places like Socorro and stuff. You know, when I'm already stateside, so it's not so hard to. Uh, to get to so i want to try and plan those trips in the in the coming years once everything's reopened after the uh yeah. the covid virus then uh yeah i'd love to start to knock off some of these trips good so stuff and uh, write another, so i could write another book <laughs> yeah i see you've got two yeah, more coming yeah. right yeah yeah That's i've actually made here. good progress on the uh confessions of a dive master too actually i've made big progress already up to forty thousand words already so um yeah, I hope to get that one out. Hopefully, this uh, same time next year. Hopefully, December the first. Hopefully, if uh, it all comes together, we'll see. <laughs> Good for you. And what else? Yeah. A year, a year in the land down under is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Was, um, I spent a, a year backpacking in Australia back in two thousand and three. So I've gone through a little bit in the first book, but there's really a hell of a lot more that I didn't add. You know, it was just a quick run through basically in the first book. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that one as well. I've already started it. Um, kind of the confessions of a dive master two overtook that one now because <laughs> i really because people say oh when's the next one coming out you know so that's kind mm -hmm. of taken priority over the uh the, the backpacking book around australia but we'll uh yeah we'll see the we'll writing see is happens. a challenge yeah. isn't it because i because don't you find i don't know if you find I, I me i mean i i like telling stories and stuff and i always find you know i tell something about a dive story or a travel story you know people are laughing and it sounds good maybe they're drinking as well but when I write it down, I, I never seem to be able to make it sound that funny again. Or maybe the alcohol is missing. I don't know. What's your take <laughs> on that? Yeah, it, you have to. It's, it is a challenge to try and make it sound interesting. You know, um, yeah, I try to be descriptive as possible in, in places, and uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to put it across sometimes in words. You know, what actually happened, right? It sounds better in a spoken story than uh, than written. It's tough, isn't it? It's a challenge. <laughs> it is People, tough. Yeah, it is you tough. know, it's it's a real challenge. Yeah, 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 it's tough. Yeah, you gotta try and make oh, it a little bit general. humorous, a bit, you know, a bit uh, backed up with a couple of facts and stuff like that. I think is is pretty good. So uh, yeah, I hope they manage to get that across. Who's yeah. the person you wrote this book for? Who who who's the reader that you envision? You know, I really wanted to to really push it out. I guess obviously to to people who love the ocean really is the key thing, you know, and people who love a bit of adventure. Uh, who love to travel, you know, I, I really, that was my main, but if I tried, if I can get some people to read the book and inspire them to become a dive master or an instructor, you know, that kind of thing, that would be great. Or even if I, if people will even learn to dive from reading it, you know, that's the challenge of selling the book and, you know, is for people to actually take a chance on it and pick it up and, and hopefully it will aspire, inspire them to, uh, you know to to get into diving or snorkeling or just even looking you know looking under the water with a with a mask and snorkel you know that's that's good enough right 
please get in, get involved and see it. To, you know, the way it's going, you know, how long do we have left with these beautiful reefs? You know, how long do we have? That's the sad thing, you know, with everything going on right now. You know, I really hope uh, yeah. we can change our ways a little bit and uh, stop overfishing, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. And the plastic problem, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking to see all of these, all the plastic over the reef some days, you know, it's really, really yes, disappointing. Yes. To see these. Yeah. I hate the sachets, you know, the small sachets of coffee and shampoo and all that, you know. Right. Those really, uh, I really hate those things with a, with yeah. a passion. But right. sadly with the you know, the economy in the Philippines, you know, people can't always afford to buy one big bottle of shampoo. You know, they can only afford to buy the sachet once every couple of days. So, uh, yeah, yeah, those kind of things are hard to, hard to see. Mm. Um, let's see, hopefully we can change things around a little bit and, uh, improve over the years, but, uh, it's definitely a huge challenge. That's for sure. Oh, good message. Yeah. And I guess yeah, also yeah, put with, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, younger people, I mean, diving like many active sports has turned into more of an older person's sport, you know, it'd be nice to, you know, inspire some younger folks and get them out of computers and, and, uh, you know, devices. You know, that, that's very true. That's very, very true. And I've seen a, a massive, massive change in, um, the dive shows, you know, I, I've, I do dive shows all over the world. I go to the U S to two or three shows a year, the UK, Australia, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Thailand. I go all over the place to dive shows. And in Asia, they're actually doing quite well. You know, they seem to have quite a young, you know, a young group. Mm -hmm. And I would say the average age is between 20 and 30. But mm -hmm. when I go to the shows in the UK, in Australia, in the US, you know, the age is between, you know, 50 and 70 almost, you know, so bizarre. you have to ask where, where's the next generation going to be coming from? Yeah. You know, that's, that's the big question because, yeah. um, yeah, there seems to be a, a, a generation gap almost, uh, happening now, which is, which is mm. sad to see, you know, in the, yeah. in the U S and the, the UK. So, um, I hope we can again, inspire some others to get back into it. You know, yeah. otherwise, uh, it's a bizarre thing that, you know, be, what, you uh, know, like a lot of, a lot of activities, like for example, motorcycling is like that. It's an old guy's. Activity. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. I mean, things you yeah. would never guess. Yeah. Yeah. The trade shows are really dying now, actually, to be honest, you know, already in the U S over the last couple of years, we've lost shows in, you know, in the Washington state in the uh, Chicago show didn't happen this year. You know, the yeah. Texas show went under, you know, it's, it's worrying, you know, because I really love the dive shows. I absolutely love the time, you know, chatting face to face to people. But um, it, it seems to be more like what we're doing right now, Jim, you know, with the, the Zoom meetings and that kind of thing. That's the, yeah. <laughs> that could be yeah. the future of dive shows, the virtual well, shows. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. Yeah, I'm personally not a big fan of them, to be honest. It's better mm -hmm. than nothing, but uh, yeah, there's something yeah, missing, I, though, I right? much prefer, yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, maybe it's the human contact sort of thing, you know, the, the yeah. actual being close to someone talking. But, uh, yeah, it's worrying for, for next year, actually, you know, for the, the dive shows. I wonder if, how many we're going to have next year because of the COVID situation, yeah. you know, and obviously the loss of economy, you know, the loss of money of everybody as well. So, uh, mm. yeah. Can be, I, uh, I tell you, mate, for me, you know, I, I actually did my, <laughs> my PhD, my, my study, was uh, distance education and, and systems and student attitudes and adaption and uh, you know satisfaction. So I was mm -hmm. all a proponent of this distance education. I just finished it two years ago. And then when yeah. this hit and I started with it, in the beginning I was all enthusiastic, but you know what? I am very happy. I just went back to face to face. I am super happy because it's just for, for that 100%, there's just something missing that our, our yeah. technology, our systems, the, the human element is missing and it counts. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It does. It means a lot. I think it really means a lot. And I can't wait to, uh, to try and get back to some, some normality, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe it's going to take a few more months yet with this COVID and the vaccine starting to be put out now. So I hope that's going to have a big change in the mentality and we can travel again with a, <laughs> you know, a little bit of ease yeah. without having all these restrictions and everything. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for, uh, yeah. Yeah. Quick recovery for everybody, you know, really. Yeah. Mate, one quick yeah. question that, I, that I'll, sure. I'll insert back. 
what was uh because you you kind of a, a a big part of your book at one point was your shift um when you went toward the sales and marketing and you had mentioned some of the yeah. mentoring and guidance you had what was is there any of the you can recount as any of the best sales or marketing advice you've had or is there anything that sticks out in your mind <laughs> the best to be honest with you the the best advice <laughs> i ever learned was from the movie the founder from the guy who you know ray crock who oh, found him McDonald's McDonald's. <laughs> yeah really because Michael Keaton, wasn't for me, it? Pers- uh, yes that's right yeah um and persistence you know that for me is the key thing never give up you know don't get frustrated when things don't go your way you know and and just keep going and and get to know the people you're working with, you know, become friends with them and, you know, and, and really try to build a relationship, you know, with them because that's a lot easier to, uh, to work with over time, you know, so that was really my key thing is never, ever give up, you know, never keep going. Um, I'm quite lucky because I make my own dive videos, you know, with my video cameras. I, I worked for many, many years in the location. So I have many things going for me that make it easier for me to sell naturally. So if you're somebody that's not from where you're trying to sell, you know, mm. I think it's a little bit more, a bit more tricky if you don't have that, uh, that hands-on experience of actually physically living somewhere and seeing every little thing about the place. So you right. can really, you can really sell the place then a lot easier than someone who's been there for, you know, a week, a year or something like that. So um, yeah, but just never give up. That's my, keep keep on to people don't uh, don't be overbearing because some some companies are very very aggressive and i i, I think you annoy people in the end if you if you're too aggressive with people you know you, they'll they'll push you to one side so i think it's really good to build a uh, a friendly relationship with people if you can mm. uh, and then over time you know you'll get them into your place i think and uh, hopefully start a long career with them and they'll come and visit you every couple of years at least that's uh, that's my mentality on the, the whole sales thing, to be honest. All right. Good advice, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, let's get all the pitches here. So what, what are the things, how, how can, can divers support you? Right. So you've got, you've got a YouTube channel, you've got a resort, yes. you've yeah. got a book. Let, let's hear what, what are. Uh... Yeah. So um, if you guys would like to come and see some of the diving that we discussed just now, then you can visit uh, scandydivers.com. So you can check out the website of the resort there and make uh, email inquiries into us directly from there. Uh, if you want to see my underwater movies, then you can check out Scuba Sheep Productions on YouTube and also on uh, Facebook as well. And then, yeah, I'm also pretty active on Facebook personally. Uh, Christian Mears is my, uh, e- my Facebook uh, ad. And I also share quite a lot of my underwater videos uh, on my personal page as well. So that's the main channels. And then, of course, you can get the book Confessions of a Dive Master on Amazon, on paperback and uh, ebook version as well. And maybe audio book in the future. We'll see. <laughs> right. Good for you, Chris. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. All right. And you, you sell uh, what? Pictures and video from there? Is that what people can? Um, I actually, you can buy my uh my video clips of sale on uh, Pond Five, which is like um, like a version of Shutterstock. Basically, it's a place where you can buy. So I do have quite a few uh, of my clips for sale. Basically, of, of video clips from around the world. All right. Once again, if you'd like to support Chris, the Amazon link for his book is down below. It's physical or electronic Kindle, and also I have the other details of how you could follow and support Chris. Uh, Facebook. There are a couple websites there. Um, Let's support Chris if we can. Alrighty. Thanks again. See you next time.